Mr. President, ladies and gentlemen, dear colleagues, first and foremost, allow me to extend a heartfelt congratulations to the United Arab Emirates government bringing the world together at a critical moment for global transformative climate action despite the challenges we all face today worldwide. As we once again gather to face the greatest challenge of our time, we are at a critical time in the fight against climate change. Catastrophic global warming and ongoing extreme weather events are casting a dangerous shadow over our collective future. Today I stand before you not only as the representative of the Republic of Serbia, but also as a global citizen advocating for global well-being. Across the border of the Republic of Serbia, the echoes of climate change resonate disturbingly loudly. Our country is at the forefront, struggling with alarmingly high average temperatures above the global average, since average temperature in Serbia already increased by 1.8 degrees Celsius, and in summer it is as high as 2.6 degrees Celsius. At the same time, climate projections indicate that if we continue business as usual, by the end of the century we can expect an increase in the average temperature up to 5.8 degrees Celsius, a cataclysm of a kind that threatens our economic and social fabric. This year will most certainly take the infamous title of the warmest ever recorded, not just globally, but in our country as well. Aside from warmest months ever recorded being July, August, September and October, we witnessed for the first time two tropical nights with temperatures over 20 degrees Celsius during the month of October, which is unheard of in Serbia. In addition, we are still calculating the damage drought made to our economy last year, while on the other hand, severe storms devastated our cities, causing a vast damage as well. We must stand united against climate change, and we must act now. We will continue to contribute to the global fight against climate change by improving our national system for mitigation and adaptation in line with our national circumstances and with the support of our development partners. In steadfast response, steadfast response to this existential threat, I'm honored to announce the government of the Republic of Serbia's unwavering commitment. In June of this year, we charted a transformative course with the adoption of our low carbon development strategy, which served as the basis for revised national determined contribution that raised the ambition of our initial NDC by more than three times. Long-term requirements of the Paris Agreement as well as the EU accession process are the basis for long-term vision of the strategy that by 2050 Serbia will be a low-carbon society with a competitive and resource-efficient economy which provides to citizens new green jobs and quality life in a climate-resilient society. With this in mind and guided by science, we also developed our climate change adaption program, which is to be adopted in the forthcoming period. Adaption program will provide climate risk and vulnerability assessment and propose medium and long-term adap adaptation policies and measures in the most vulnerable sectors, such as agriculture, infrastructure, forestry, and human health. Recognizing that the fight against climate change transcends borders, we issue a solemn call to action for all. While our national progress is unstoppable, it is part of a larger puzzle. The Republic of Serbia is ready to play its role in the global orchestra against climate change. We call upon the international community, especially our developed counterparts, to honor their commitments to financial and technical assistance. Let this be a call for armed cooperation and shared responsibility, a call for the clarity of saying one against the pessimistic scenarios. Although I have to add something, which is my personal opinion, and once again, many thanks to Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed Al Nahyan, the President of the United Arab Emirates, for his great hospitality. I just would like to say that we all gathered here because of a terribly difficult problem that we are facing with, which is climate change. But how are we going to resolve this issue if we are not able to resolve all the geopolitical problems we are facing with today? There are many wars throughout the world that we haven't been able to stop in the recent period. And uh, moreover, I'm afraid that we won't be able to do so. If we were not capable of delivering results in this, how we can be so sure, how we can be so certain that we'll deliver the very best results, the very proper results on climate change issues as well. And just to add to that, I believe that bringing us all back to the real principles of the Organization of the United Nations that we established after the Second World War, because we have to act in accordance, in adherence with 
rules, regulations that were accepted by most of the members of the international community, by most or, or by all the states of international community, it has to happen. Otherwise, we'll always face arbitration, different approaches, and we'll never deliver better results even on this. You cannot have different approaches towards territorial integrities of some countries, and we as Serbia know this better than anyone else dare to say. And on the other hand, I heard today a phrase, as we come together, as we come together, as we come together, let us find a common denominator which will mean, which will find a way, find a path to resolve firstly the biggest geopolitical issues and then to tackle in a very proper way an issue of climate changes which is becoming one of the most important. Thank you once again.